You're watching Telecom TV from 5G World in London, part of the Tech Accelerate event. And joining me now is Bebop Grester, who is COO and Chairman of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. Bebop, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Now we're not going to be talking about cellular connectivity or even fiber connectivity, we're going to be talking about a physical connectivity innovation, Hyperloop. Tell me more about the concept behind Hyperloop. Imagine to have a capsule full of people. You put this capsule inside the tube, you evacuate the tube from the air so there's no resistance. It's like being in space. Now you can move the capsule from point A to point B at almost the speed of sound using a tiny fraction of the energy. This is a very advanced concept but very simple because the technology was actually already there. We just integrated in a very innovative way. So how can Hyperloop play a part in our vision of smart cities and future cities? So imagine, Guy, that we are trying not to repeat the same mistakes of the past. We're trying to not to solve one problem and create another 10. So when you're building an infrastructure that actually is built on pylon, we're trying to first use the existing infrastructure and the existing right of way. So we are planning to build, especially at the beginning, the hyperloop on top of rails or on top of highways. When you have this amazing backbone, you can actually create an infrastructure that is capable of transporting not only passenger, but electricity, water, and also bandwidth. So imagine to be able to create a backbone of connections that can launch a parallel internet. And we are working on this new generation of, uh, of infrastructure that actually can work on different premises. For example, you don't need a giant expense of infrastructure because using new technology like MeshNet and what we call Internet of Everything, you can develop new material that allow you to actually be more efficient, more economically viable, and also make money out of it. So we're working on different levels. Uh, we are designing new materials. Uh, one of them is called Vibrimium. If you're familiar with Marvel, it's uh, the material of the shield of Capital America, right? <laughs> well, we actually invented it. Uh, it's a mesh of carbon fiber and uh, sensors. They can actually be meshed. They are thin like airs, and they can be meshed inside the tube. So you have materials that can actually transmit data, big data, and can predict leaks. It can be conductive, so it can actually work as a bandwidth backbone and can also um, use as a giant sensor to predict the need of the future. What's the current status of the work you're doing? How much of it is at the research stage and how much is actually being physically built? So we're very excited because we passed from feasibility studies to actual implementation. We started to build the first full-scale capsule passenger system with a tier 2 manufacturer called Carburer, uh, Carbures. Uh, it's a tier 2 manufacturer of uh, Airbus and because it takes a little while, a year and a half to create a capsule, that was the first element that needed to be sorted out. And we started to build the first one last month uh, we are foreseeing the first capsule to be ready in 2018. In the meantime, we signed seven contracts with the nations that are actually willing to implement an Hyperloop. And we did several feasibility studies. The biggest one was in Abu Dhabi. It was the most complete Hyperloop study that humanity has ever done. We analyzed all the aspects of building the infrastructure, but also what is the impact in terms of social impact, um, uh, uh, sustainability, not only on the Abu Dhabi of the present, but also on the Abu Dhabi of the future, taking in consideration the complete master plan that the government has. So we finished the feasibility study, we're going to publish the result after Ramadan, and then the government, we're discussing with the government to build the first full-scale item. National infrastructure projects are hugely expensive undertakings. So what are the cost benefits behind Hyperloop? How can you disrupt our current thinking as to how you finance and operate transportation systems? 
So I come from the startup world. I sold my first company when I was 28. And then I started to invest in company. I invested in more than 70. And I did three IPO. So for me, profits was a normal element embedded in the, um, in the investments. When I initially started to analyze the transportation industry, that's not the case. They have a model that is so weird because it's based on subsidies. What we don't know, for example, the, the majority of the infrastructure on the ground doesn't make money. Now, the real issue is not how much an infrastructure cost. The real question is how fast you can recoup the investment. And the usual answer to this question is never, because it's all subsidized. Now, the Hyperloop has an amazing opportunity. It's the first system on the ground that can actually make money. It can recoup the entire investment from six to 10 years, depending on where you're building it. So it's cheaper than a high speed rail because it doesn't use all the inefficiencies of the high speed rail. We don't have any electrified track. We are uh, simply moving a capsule on a laminate of aluminum. And we have a tube where we can evacuate the air in 16 hours, spending 1,200 euro per hour. But then, after the, you bring the pressure to one pascal, you need only 25 euro to maintain the pressure at that level. So it's super cheap. And imagine to have a system that is basically in almost a vacuum. You're like in space. You push the capsule, and because it levitates with passive levitation, you don't use any energy. So it floats for miles. And it's extremely energy efficient. Hyperloop is not only about speed, it's about efficiency. Now you came up with an extremely innovative way of finding expertise to help you with this project and to create your workforce, your global workforce. That's where you know, I got excited because what we have done it's uh, not only exciting because we are building an hyperloop, but how we did it. We published the white paper, the Elon Musk white paper, immediately after he published it, uh, open source. We reached out to him and we said, you know, we want to build a company. And he was very excited about this. So we published the white paper in our website, Jumpstart Fund, and we did a call to action. Whoever was willing to join our team, we were giving them stock options. What happened after is magic. I think it's an example of what humanity can do when we put together the best minds in the planet. We have 860 scientists working from 42 countries, and they are professionals like uh, architects, uh, engineers, uh, scientists of all kinds of uh, um, industries. They are moonlighting to change the world. And we, they contributed more than 60,000 hours in less than four years. And we have now a company that passed from a feasibility study to building in a very short amount of time. They said we are the biggest startup in the planet. I don't like that definition. I think we are the example on how when humanity wants to solve a problem, we have the technologies to do that. Now, this month, Harvard, will start to teach our model in their courses and makes me particularly proud of what we are doing. That is bigger than the IPLO. It's a solution to all humanity's problem. We have the technology to do that. Bebop, thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure, Guy. Thank you.